Recently, I saw this thread on Twitter by Michael asking about best practices when it comes to using the Vue.js composition API. There is a lot of interesting advice in this thread. You should definitely check it out. And I'm going to make a little video here reviewing a code base and talking about some patterns I have discovered while using the Vue composition API. We're going to be taking a look at this code base someone sent me. I believe this GitHub user is pronounced Ilmoi. Uh, could be doing that one wrong. Either way, we're looking at the NFT Armory application. This is a cryptocurrency application of some sort. I don't know very much about cryptos, but that's completely fine. We're going to be focusing on the code and how everything is set up, specifically the composables and some patterns that have emerged. I've cloned the repo over here, but before we go through it, I'm just going to talk about some of the things I've observed when it comes to composables. There appears to be several different classes of composables. The first is this reactive global state, something like a Vuex or a kind of store. It's going to be reactive and used throughout your application, and it's going to be a singleton, which means there's going to only be one copy of that variable or that data, and you're going to be reusing it everywhere. In this application, we're going to see a domain-specific uh, global singleton, which is called use wallet, but there are generic ones as well, for example, Pina and the use store composable. There are then going to be domain-level reusable reactivity, which we're going to see, and then generic reusable ones as well, something that could be re reused in any application, so it has no domain-specific logic tied to it. Finally, at the end of this video, I'm going to make some recommendations. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at how this is set up. We're going to be looking at the composables directory and going over each one and just making some observations about each of them, how they might be improved or some of the good patterns that are emerging. We're going to start with the cluster composable. We can see this is an example of the global singleton composable. And the way we can see that is down here. We have what is effectively a global variable. It's only going to be declared once. It is going to be a reactive reference to a cluster. And presumably this is going to be updated throughout the application lifetime. We then have our classic use cl cluster composable. You will notice all composables generally start with use. They don't have to, but it's a very common pattern that has been emerging, and I recommend you follow it. If we jump down here, we're going to see another very common pattern. You will often see a reactive reference that is global, and it's going to be read-only. This means it cannot be easily mutated. The way to mutate it is going to be by using some sort of function. In this case, things like set cluster URL or the set cluster function down here. We then see inside of here, we have a number of functions that refer to cluster. We have get cluster URL, which derives some data here. And then we have set cluster, which is going to update it. There is one potential improvement we can make here, and that is regarding the get cluster URL function. We can see it's going to be a function with no arguments, and all it's going to do is derive some data based on the cluster value, which is going to be a reactive reference. What this means we can do is actually refactor this and make it into a computed property. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. The first thing we need to do is jump up here and import computed as you might expect. And now we're just going to go ahead and convert this one. I'm going to keep the original here just for something to reference to. It is going to be a computed property which returns a string. And then we're just going to go ahead and return the value in here. It's going to be derived from cluster URL mapping. And this is really all we need to do. We've now got a variable which is not going to be a function anymore. It's going to derive its value based on this cluster value. And every time this changes, computed is going to be updated. Finally, all we need to do now is go ahead and replace this throughout our application. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to rename this variable get cluster URL to just cluster URL. And then we're going to use value to access the inner value. So let's go ahead and update that one now. Finally, all I need to do is update this as well. And everything is going to continue working as expected. This is going to be an improvement though, we're no longer using a function. We're more effectively using Vue's reactivity system and composing it together to create this reactive computed value here. We do have an error down here because we're still returning the wrong one. Let's go ahead and update this one to be cluster URL. And with a bit of luck, everything is going to continue working as expected. If I come back to the application, <laughs> we're actually getting an error. Looks like I didn't update something somewhere. Let's go ahead and do that one as well. We're going to change this one to be cluster URL save this off and now everything is going to continue working just fine. Uh, I don't know what this is, just going to close that, but suffice to say the improvement here is by using a derived value in the form of a computed value instead of using a function. Other than that, I think this composable is just fine and a good example of the global singleton composable. Let's move on to the next one now. We're going to take a look at copy. 
So copy is an example of a non-domain specific composable. It hasn't got any global variables. Instead, it has a local variable here. So every time you call use copy, you are going to get a fresh string. We can see here we're following the same read-only pattern again. If we scroll down to the bottom, copy text is going to be read-only, and it's going to be updated by calling set copy text. And that's how this one is going to work. It's just going to basically allow you to easily copy some text. Uh, a good example of a more perhaps production ready copy composable can be found over here inside of the view use rep repository and it is called use clipboard and it works in much the same way. If we head over here and actually look at how the source code works, jump inside of here, we can see they're doing something very similar. They're using use timeout and some other composables like use event just to be able to easily copy a value. So definitely worth checking this out. The reason this is a good example is it's using the composition API very effectively. It's actually building a composable from existing composables such as use event listener and use timeout function. And this is one of the nice things about the composition API is you can take lots of little parts and compose them together and make a larger, more complex composable. We're going to jump now into the download composable and we can see this one is a little bit different. Namely, it's not importing any of Vue's reactivity APIs and this is what, not what I would really consider to be a composable. The code works perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but when I see a use download or a use composable, I do expect to have some sort of reactivity and be hooking into Vue's reactivity system, and that is not the case here at all. This code is very reusable, so what I would generally recommend for these is just making it, making it into a plain old function. In this case, what I would do is delete the export, and then we're just going to be left with a couple of very basic functions. All we need to do is format it, so we have two functions here. And finally, all we need to do is go ahead and say export const, maybe download, and then just pass in these two functions. And just like that, we've simplified the code a little bit, and we've kind of revealed this is not really a view composable as such, it's just very simple reusable logic. Everything's going to continue to work just fine, but what I would generally do is move this out of the composables folder, maybe into something else, because I don't feel like this is really a composable. That's just my opinion, there's many different ways to do this, but if I was to introduce some view reactivity here, I would then pretend, potentially considering making this into a composable again. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next one now, and that is going to be the error composable. Uh, this is another example of uh, the non-global composable. Every time you call use error, you're going to get a new error. It's going to be a reactive ref. We then have another very similar pattern here. We have clear and set, quite similar to the copy composable. And if we scroll down here, we're probably going to be doing the same thing using read only and then returning all of these variables. This is very similar to the copy composable and I think it's just fine. It is a bit more specific to the application, but I think this is a good example of a reusable composable, at least throughout this application. The next example is going to be use, uh, the use explorer composable. I really like this example because it actually makes use of another composable, the cluster composable. And all it's going to do is create uh, two different functions here and then return some values. Uh, we can actually see another example here where we could use a computed function more effectively. Instead of having a function here with no variables, what we could do is change this into a computed property. And that would just make it a little bit more concise and more effectively use Vue's composition API. Other than that, I don't think there's too much to talk about here, but this is a good example of a reusable composable that is very specific to this application. The next one is going to be the loading composable. This is a very large and complex one. I don't fully understand uh, how it works. The, even the author himself has noted this is a little bit hacky and it may not be the best way to do it. But I'll just show you what this is and how it works if you'd like to try it out yourself. If we come back to the application here and uh, paste in something, let me just go ahead and refresh the page. With a bit of luck, I should be able to trigger a load. I'm going to grab this wallet address first just so I can <laughs> go ahead and trigger that one using the placeholder example, paste it in here, and we have this little loading ticker down here. And that's what this is doing. Uh, I don't fully understand what the user means here by saying that this is hacky, but I, I think it does work just fine. I'm going to skip over this one because it's a little bit too complex for this short lecture, but uh, needless to say, it does seem to work fine. It is very effectively using a number of compo composable or reactivity APIs. So I do think this is a good example of a composable. Finally, it imports from view use using other composables, so it shows the power of the composition API and how you can use it and compose together to create more complex uh, composables. The next one is going to be the modal example, and this is another fairly good example of a composable, but I do have some potential improvements we could make here. 
Just to show you how this works, if I come over to this tab and click on how does it work, we are going to get this modal, and this is powered by the use modal composable. I think that modals are a great use case for composables because they're going to be used throughout your application and they definitely need to be both global and reactive. For that reason, I'm a little bit surprised this is declared inside of here. I was really expecting the modals variable to be declared outside because otherwise you're going to get a new set of modals for every time you call this use modal composable. It appears to be working just fine, primarily because once you have a modal showing, you can't actually navigate away or show any other modals from what I can tell, so uh, it's not really a problem. But generally when it comes to modals, I like mine to be global, so I would generally move this outside of here, and then I'd have some way to know which modal is currently showing, and if I would like to show a different modal, perhaps hide this, or, or do some logic around there. Either way, I think this is a pretty good example again. It uses a very common pattern we've seen so far, which is the read-only data and then setters properties, and it's working just fine. There are a number of popular use modal composables out there, so you could go ahead and check out those and see how they work as well. Finally, we're moving on to the Pinata composable. I don't know what Pinata is. It appears to be something to do with the cryptocurrency, but we can see here there's no imports from view. There is no reactivity here. So again, I think this is a good example of a reusable function, but one that doesn't really need to be a composable. I would be just tempted to take all these functions and export them and move it out of the composables directory. Either way, I think this is fine, the logic does work, but one of the advantages of moving these out of this composable would be making it very easy to test. These are all basically pure functions and that would make it easy to test if you move them outside of the composable. The final one we're going to look at is the wallet composable. And this is probably the most interesting and in my opinion, the most uh, appropriate composable in this application. You can see it's going to go ahead and import a bunch of reactivity APIs as you would expect. And then we have this concept of a global wallet, which is going to be used throughout the application. We have two of these global variables. So it is the global singleton pattern. Uh, there is one small improvement we can make here. Instead of passing in the ref value here, what we can do is actually delete this and pass it into shallow ref directory uh, directly, and that's going to make this a little bit more concise. Uh, just a little bit of an aside. Anyway, if we go down here, we can see we have our use wallet composable. We have a really good use of a computed property here. It's going to be derived based on the wallet adapter value, so I think this is just fine. We then have an example here of something that probably could be a computed property, get wallet. It takes no arguments and it's based on the value of a computed property or a reactive property. So I would make this into a computed property as well. If we head down here, we have the setter. So that's just going to be fine as well. And if we scroll down, it's much the same pattern here. Again, this probably could be a computed property. Same with the get wallet address function as well. Finally, we're returning the read only property here and we have a number of getter and setters. So again, another very similar pattern to the other composables is emerging. This is the final composable and I think we saw a few different patterns here. Just to review and make some recommendations, I'm going to head back here. So one thing I would recommend when you're writing composables is make sure you consider the kind of composable you're going to be writing. There are a few different ones we've seen. We have the reactive global singleton. In this case, the business specific ones, use wallet and use cluster. If you'd like to make it more generic, you could potentially do so. For example, creating a use store and then using it to power both of these. And then you could potentially use that in other applications as well. We've also seen the domain specific but non-global singleton composable. For example, use explorer, you're going to get a new explorer each time you call the use explorer composable. And that is using reactivity APIs as well. Finally, we've seen the non-domain non specific uh, composable, for example, use copy. If you'd like to see more examples of really good ones, you can come over to view use. They have probably over a hundred different composables. These are all very generic and can be used in any different application. So definitely a good resource on how to write good composables. Finally, I would always recommend using computed properties for derived data where possible. Computed properties are one of the most powerful parts of view and you should use them as much as possible because they're really optimized and they'll give you great performance and also make your application code more readable. Finally, I would really consider if something you're writing is actually going to be a composable or just plain old functions. For example, as we saw earlier with the use download composable, it wasn't using any reactivity APIs. It was just a number of pure functions and they are very easy to test in isolation. And there's not really a reason for them to be inside of a composable. They're just plain old functions. Pure functions are always good and you should try and write them as much as you can. They're easy to test and easy to reason about. And more importantly, they're not going to be bound to your UI. Uh, UI framework. 
So for example, if you'd like to refactor to a different framework or even just do a refactor in the same framework, it's going to be easier to do so. A good example of this is the functional core imperative shell paradigm. There is a playlist here that I created a little while ago. You can go ahead and check this out, but it will show you how you can create your business logic in pure functions separately, and then use the composition API to add reactivity and build out the UI layer. In this case, the imperative shell. Anyway, that does bring us to the end of this video. If you do find these kind of code reviews useful, please let me know. I'm still exploring a different content to make, uh, but I would like to make more of these in the future because I think it's really useful to review real world applications and see the kind of patterns people are using and how they are creating applications. Anyway, that's enough for now, and I will see you in the next video.